actually we are going to see um, about it like introduction about Pega and actually like what are the things that we are going to achieve from the uh, CPBA certification. So first actually we should know what's been like uh, all about Pega and then we can maybe little bit talk about actually what are the contain that we are going to cover as part of CPBA certificate uh, course. Mukesh, sorry, this Manoj, can you hear me? Yeah, Manoj, I can hear you. Hey, um, uh, Ashok, uh, this one more person joining Sudhakar, uh, he's trying to do it. Uh, he said he's almost done. I just, just want to let you know. Oh. So, if you just want to please some yeah. introduction, take one minute, and then we can proceed further. Sure. Yeah. Hey, this is Manoj. Um, I got around 20 years of IT experience, uh, but mainly development experience. Um, been like a team lead. Well, I'm kind of familiar with the business gap, you know, requirement gathering and all that because we kind of wear different hats in this in the place where I work. Um, but and my tech, healthcare is my domain, and if the technology I'm using right now is a legacy one like C, Unix, Oracle, and all that. Yeah, that's but no experience in Pega. But I, I want to switch my career. Fine, thanks, Manoj. Yeah, Sonam. Uh, Sonam, can you hear me? So that you can start in time. I think Sonam will start after that. Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, my name is Sudhakar, and uh, I am a Q. Currently, I'm working as a BA support for uh, 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 domain and, uh, and uh, I have uh, ten years of I have ten years of experience in the healthcare industry. And uh, mostly I'm on to the uh, EDA side and uh, EDA claims and encounters and uh, uh, all the areas of the healthcare industry. And uh, I just want to switch my profile. So a few friends suggested me to look into this. Sure. Are you able to hear me now, Mukesh? Yes, I'm able to hear you now. Okay, okay. I don't know what problem it was earlier. Uh, I have five years of experience as a developer, not as a business analyst. And uh, uh, this business analyst role, I'm just uh, into it. I have just one month of experience in that and I'm working in claims management. And this PEGA is new and business analyst role is also new for me. And currently I'm uh, in Sedgwick, uh, working in US. Okay. And earlier I was with Tata Consultancy Service. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there is one more Priyanka just joined. Ashok, uh, need introduction for Priyanka as well? Or? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi Priyanka. Priyanka, can you please unmute yourself? Hi Priyanka, can you just brief about your particular, like just in one or two lines, about your experience, about Vega and the like role of a VBA? Sure, um, I've worked overall around six years and um, I have experience as a VA um, and as a QA. Um, I have experience in um, Pega for around two years. Uh, with version 7.1, uh, primarily in uh, case management and dispute management. Um, yeah, I have experience both in um, BA and QA in Pega. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So and now I get a kill like uh, the audience actually what the number of experience who has experience on Pega. So today is actually like I'm going to not actually like more talk about the business Rule. Today, it's like it's all about. First thing you should know what is actually like why Pega is actually like in the market. Why they are leading into the market. Why people are wants to 
learn Pega, why it's like there are features, what are the different features of the Pega and what is the little history about Pega. So that actually we are going to cover today. Yeah. So first thing in Pega is actually like Pega is actually a model driven a tool. Okay. Uh, just a minute. So now actually we can see, uh, so what's actually like, why Pega? So Pega is actually like, if you can see, they are very adaptable to market. Whatever actually like market trend is going on, Pega is changing into that. So if you can see Pega, if you can see, you can use cloud, you can use analytics, you can use mobile, and they are actually like uh, different segments of the uh, industry. All industry, if you can see, actually like healthcare, uh, banking, payments, manufacturing, supply chain, they are present in everywhere. So every process, government organization, they are actually present, Pega is present into that. So the main feature of Pega is actually we don't need any coding. I feel like everything is in Pega is actually automated and they provide very good UI and uh, they actually their main motto is build for change. Like whatever we are changing, Whatever you are uh, like designing, they are like more meto is it's like built for change. Don't build for today. Like whatever you are doing, whatever your requirement, whatever you are uh, like you are designing, so design it for the future. Whatever you are uh, you are doing, so that if you like in future you can make your product actually like customizable for the future use. Okay. So that's the main uh, and the main thing is it's like the development of any product which is really like in other technology if you see Java, HTML or mainframe that takes a lot of time and in Pega when you are developing application it takes it's around 30 to 40 percent less time. So if it is less time the return of investment will be better. So that's why it's like uh, various companies are going forward for Pega. So if you can see they are actually like uh, industry wise they present in banking, health benefit, insurance, communications, credit card, healthcare, <laughs> manufacturing, supply chain, their life sciences, government, okay. So all the Fortune 500 companies are actually like using Pega. So they are actually like the list of uh, customers who are actually like going to use uh, like already using Pega. So these are the major players. There are other players as also there which are not listed here, like small players are not there and the list is still growing. I feel like many more players are trying to actually get more on Pega onto that. So in this actually you can see all the banks, Pharma, Nobratis, ING, Commonwealth, Ford, every like if you need, uh, have heard about any technologies or any big company, you can find it here. So the little story about Pega, Pega started as a company in 1983 in USA and initially they are not into the BPM part. They started to support some of the middleware product for American Express in 1983 and uh, after that in 90s they formed a team within themselves which like with some BPM expert to start working on Pega. And it took that and 10 years to release a BPM product and 2001 they officially released Pega as a BPM product and that is they have any um, a lot of financial crunch in 90s to support their companies and in 96 I'd like to support their financial they went public and they listed in NASDAQ as Pega technology and after that it like from 2005 onwards they like uh, taken mass, uh, market a lot. It's like the revenues and everything got very much uh, onto that. So their got profit got higher. Their actually BPM uh, product actually like taken a lot. So I'll come into this slide later. <coughs> Sorry. So 
you can see it's like uh, they are actually growth wise they are number one in the BPM segment number five into the CRM part and they acquired many more companies like Cordian was a competitor they acquired that competitor on 2010 uh, for mobile they have acquired antenna software and they acquired for analytics one Bangalore based company Mass Labs and uh, there is a company called as Firefly co-browsing actually like there is a feature called as co-browsing for that they have acquired company Firefly and recently in uh, April 2016 they have acquired a company called as OpenSpan and why they actually have acquired that company uh, for automation that company <laughs> provides support for robotics and automation so actually like now they want to click the lower end of the BPO work can be automated by the robotics. Uh, no, actually I'm on site number six now. Uh, Mukesh, I think I can't see any slide changes. We are still on the first slide, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Slides. Second slide. Can you see now? Something in yes. 2010 competitors, uh, that slide we can able to see it now. Is the same? You <laughs> 2010 competitor coordinate, that's what I see now. Uh, is it changing now? Yes, now it is changing. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, didn't, we didn't see any of these before when you were saying. I thought like you were with the first slide itself. Uh, oh, fine. Sorry. I thought it's like said that already. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so, I will kill. Okay, I'll just. You can see it like uh, this is my first uh, slide. Second slide. Can you start with the second slide? Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. I'm starting with the second slide one. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, actually, that's what I told. Like, why we are using Pega a lot. I feel like uh, Pega provides a lot of new features. Actually, that you can use in multi devices. Like it can be used in cloud, it can be used in mobile, okay, it can be used in any laptop, desktop, and actually without any changes. Actually there is one platform, from that platform itself, it can be used in cloud, mobile, or anywhere. You don't need separate infrastructure for mobile, separate infrastructure for cloud, separate infrastructure for your desktop or laptop. So that's one more feature of Vega. And one more thing is actually like it's, there is no coding. So if there is no coding, there will be very less error. And I feel like the build quality is very high. So everything it turns up, I feel like the product quality is very good. The less error in production, the time to develop product is uh, very less. So the mark to market is, uh, if you say return of investment, it's like the mini company look for return of investment. So if actually we are developing any product in Vega, so if you are developing that in uh, less time, so the return of investment is better and the profit will increase by that. So that's why Vega is picking it up into the market part. Uh, the second, uh, let's move to the next slide. So I told about that you like it's presenting across the industry, banking, health, insurance, communication, credit card, payments, healthcare, manufacturing, supply chain, government, also all the Fortune 500 companies so they will be like uh, data where they can like pay guys used onto that. So this is the list of all the major players where we are using Pega. And it is the list is growing onto that. So this is about the history that I already told. They started in 1983. Okay. In 83 they are not as a BPM company. They are actually only at say like uh, a BPM uh, middleware product. Actually, they are just helping some of the big Fortune 500 companies onto their middleware things. And in 90s, they formed a team with some BPM experts to start foundation of the Pega. And in obviously, they released as a Pega product in 2001. And they have actually a lot of uh, financial trends in 90s. So they started actually like for financials. They, they went public in 1996. And from 2005 onwards, their financially was very much increased onto the your BPM product, and everything was like was very profitable for them. And after they were, they acquired many companies. So from 2000 onwards, you can see 
they have acquired six or seven companies till now Podient, Antenna Software, Profitable Corporation, Mesh Labs, Firefly, and OpenSpan. Okay. Yeah. So you can see like Pegas, how Pega evolved, right? Actually, there you can see in the market there. <laughs> So they started in 2001 and uh, Pega 4X start came in 2006 and then it's like uh, there was a click Pega 5.5 series, 5X series was run for around 4 years. So in that it was the main limitation with Pega 5, 6 are, are they, that they are not that user friendly. They are actually only can be used from one browser they are not device independent and with Pega 6 after Pega 7 the uh, <coughs> with Pega 7 actually the market of Pega is changed rapidly actually like in end of 2013 they released Pega 7 that was completely changed the view of Pega in the market actually it was cross browser it was device independent it can be used in multiple places so, uh, so that is it's clear now. Ah uh, yes, but in between it's breaking. Oh, fine. Okay. Uh, in, between, so, in between it is breaking. Actually. talking about uh, Pega 6 and Pega 7 there are a lot major difference came within that before Pega 6 also if you can see there is like the case management it's like in GCM process is managing Pega is using case management so in Pega 6 they started with the case management but with Pega 7 they have actually tremendously changed how you can dynamically handle the case actually any business process you can how you can handle dynamically how you can add any ad hoc case, so all that features came with the Pega 7, and Pega 7 is actually very rich uh, on uh, UI part. Actually, like they have integrated everything into that, like all the new features of HTML, CSS, and your JavaScript. They enabled it completely into Pega 7, and it is very easy to change. Actually, any can you want to change any specific format, or if you want to change any specific layout, so it's very easy to change any UI in Pega 7. So, life easy for actually for developers as well, and if you put uh, for actually for business analyst and actually other roles also, they've integrated onto that. And Pega provides different portals for different users. So, for business analyst, they provide a different portal so they can develop their actually uh, business oriented process there directly. And uh, for developer, actually, there are different portals for case manager. Like who is actually going to work and manage different portal for user, there is a different portal for that thing. So later classes, we will see how that looks like on that. So actually like uh, without any competition, we cannot actually like someone will not grow without it. So Pega is not alone into the market, actually who is providing this DPM and CRM part. So there are actually other market leaders into that. So in the BPM segment, it's like Tipu, Cordius, Samian, Cast360, APN, IBM Lombardi, are actually like Oracle Fusion, are actually other competitors onto the BPM segment. And onto the CRM side, Salesforce, SAP, Oracle CRM, Microsoft Dynamics CRM, so they are the top four, and we are top five, it's like five onto the BPM uh, CRM segment. You said one of the things like I mean Pega has both CRM and other one like or those two different ones. Uh, yes, sorry, Manu. No, the CRM and like you said, uh, the two sets Oracle 
a CRM was one and, and Oracle BPM was other one, right? So this like uh, we have yeah, I think like there are uh, two yeah man exactly there are two products from the uh, Oracle. One is Oracle Fusion and actually there is Oracle uh, BPM. Right. Uh -huh. So Pega Pega is kind of uh, one tool for both. Uh, yes. Pega is actually one tool for both. Actually, like it's, you can generate actually a BPM product or you can generate a CRM product from itself. Okay. Cool. That's oh. Okay. Thanks. So actually this is like uh, any business process actually if you can see actually like uh, Pega actually says that actually you can resolve that with the six hours of the concept. So if you say actually receive, route, report, respond, research and resolve. So if you say actually keep it in an example, actually if you go to an hospital, so what actually you need to do first? So they will uh, receive the information from you, what is your med medical symptoms, how you're feeling, right? So any like physical thing, uh, like previous uh, symptoms are there, what is the symptom? So they will receive the information from you and then they will route it to particularly uh, uh, normal doctor or actually any physician and they will ask you for any blood test or any other uh, normal test. And then it's like uh, uh, your report progress, how it is going on, that will be reported. And then based on your, uh, you once your report, came up, someone will prescribe you the medicine, so there it will like, they will respond you back and it will like, and based on your condition, at like how the medicine is working, how your condition is improving, how your previous medical record, so the research will be performed onto that and once you finally working well, so that is you, actually your case is resolved. So that way it's like any business process can be, it's like, can be part of it, can be described with this six hours of Pega. So another concept is Pega actually when you say that is called as DCO. So direct capture of objective. So when we get actually like any business requirement from a customer, it's like they want actually like any specific business requirement. So Pega actually like provide a feature that is called as direct capture of objective. From that actually what we do is actually we do the analysis how that can be achieved then actually we uh, move into that specific and what is like normal project life cycle goes. So this is actually the general example. So where actually we are taking off a HR recruitment. So how that can be converted into different stages and different processes. What are the different <coughs> uh, we require to achieve in a normal business process. <laughs> so in this actually if you say uh, if you actually a candidate is starting actually uh, for an interview, so first we ask for his personal information, his professional information, his educational information, and then we screening for that. Does it fit for the position? Does it have enough qualifications? And then click if it is uh, sufficient, then we can like schedule the interview. Then we conduct the interview for him, and based on the interview feedback, either he can be rejected or he can be selected. So after that. We start the background verification for him, and then uh, we uh, determine if like what will be the salary to offer to uh, that person. And once we click everything finalized, we extend the offer to him and inform the candidate. So this is actually you can see a normal handling of any case in Vega. <laughs> so. How Pega achieves with that? So Pega provides uh, like everything in Pega is called as rules. So if you take like any flow, flow is a rule. Application, application is a rule. Any UI, any UI is a click that component is a rule. Any logic decision we are using, that is a rule. So Pega provides a different set of rules to achieve actually the six hours of it. So what, how you like we are receiving the information how we are actually trying to integrate with other systems. So that figure provides different uh, category of the rule to support that. So process, user interface, logic and decision, integration, 
reporting and case management. There are some other categories are also there like security systems. So that is like not part of it's like we covered, but these are the major category of the rules which support the application. So the uh, final thing is the your certification. So these are the certification which are available for a uh, business architect and uh, for a uh, developer point of view. So currently like CPBA is the uh, certification for a business architect role and other roles are for a developer role. So CSA is actually for system architect, senior system architect. So there is a dependency onto that actually once you got certification on CSA after that you can go for other certification as well. So we will talk about the CPBA certifications now. Yeah, it's actually like certified Vega business architect only, but yeah, it's actually like in the, there is less written as process, so I'll just correct it out. So the major thing is actually like uh, the current actually which uh, Vega certifies the certification, there are only two versions are available, 7.1 and 7.2. So 7.1 actually is going to expire on this December itself, and 7.2 is started in it's like uh, this year in June only. So then 7.2 is going to be like going to be start actually for around two or three years. It will be there. So the uh, older version actually going to be retired on 31st December. So if you can see actually like uh, the certificate, uh, the question wise, it consists of 70 questions, and there will be three multiple choice questions into that, and it will be 90 minutes, and the pass percentage is 70 percent onto that. And the topics wise, you can see. Uh, in 7.2, it's like uh, they've reduced the data modeling, automatic business policy, and reporting from that. So actually, like their main focus is the role of business architect. Exactly what business architect does. So he do like analysis of the business. He do the initial design. So that we can see analysis and design are actually like 76 percent percentage in 7.2. So what they did is actually they removed uh, the uh, some of the bigger fundamentals which are happening in 7.1. So they remove that part from So if you can see, it's like uh, in 7.2, they actually reduce the uh, the Pega fundamentals of the data modeling, automatic business processing, and reporting, and it will be more focused on what's the role of a business architect. So actually, application analysis and design picks up the 76 part of it. So the course content wise, actually, we are going to cover both one 7.1 and 7.2. So whatever actually you prefer, you can go for that one. So actually, we are going to cover both of the uh, course, actually like both actually like the complete uh, application design, application analysis, case designing, UI, data modeling, and automatic business policy, and reporting as well. So that actually we are going to cover actually both 7.1 and 7.2 onto the course, so that actually it will be, so either way you can go for which uh, certification you want to go, we can, uh, you can go for that. In 7.2, they actually that make little simpler, so that the number of question is decreased to 50, and the uh, number of times is remain same 90 minutes, and the pass percentage also decreased. So there is 65 percent. So from 
50, you need to uh, get at, uh, around 30, 33 questions to be corrected for that. Um, so I have a question, like, um, because 7.1 is very detailed and they have almost changed, uh, especially for CPBA, they have changed uh, FEGA Express and they have uh, added a few more features, right? So don't you think That's it right. will be a bit confusing if we go uh, with both 7.1 and 7.2? It's just a, a question, like, how, how do, if uh, there might be some things that are clashing between the two. So that's why I'm asking. Uh, see, actually, uh, if you can see, uh, in application design, it remains same, okay? So okay. actually that is not changed uh, in 7.1 and 7.2, okay? Okay. In 7. Uh, all other things, it's like your case designing and UI designing, data modeling, are almost same in 7.1 and 7.2. Only thing is okay. that they have actually came up with a new portal for it. Actually, there was no portal for business users in 7.1. And now they okay. have came up with a new portal completely, at least Vega Express. So we are going to like right. do okay. demo on Vega Express only. Like whatever that means, we are not going to use the Designer Studio, where is the developer portal to design. So we are going to use the Vega Express only for uh, all the solutions. Okay, and uh, I attended one interview in that they asked me, would I be able to change skins and create uh, a prototype application. Do you cover anything like that in this course? Yeah, actually, see, actually we are going to create some applications. Actually, like, uh, we are going to cover actually two prototype of the application, actually, on, uh, for, to get to end-to-end -to -end onto that. Like, we are going to create different cases. We are going to create different processes within it. So we are going to okay. create two different prototype of the application in the Pega, Pega Express. So one we will do that, one is for uh, Pega Express, one we can uh, take some of the examples from the designer studio also, so that you can get full of both environment, both portal. Oh great, okay. Thank you. So that's just, uh, that's the main things that you want to cover. Like, like if you can see, uh, what the role actually we look for any analysis, like, like uh, direct capture of objective, how we define the requirements, what are the different uh, the specification we are going to do, and in application design, we are going to use how to use Pega Express and how to use the Designer Studio. So because some of the time we need to use Designer Studio as well. And then we are going to use the case designing, data model, UI, and actually like in automatic business policy, how to route, how to like notification, how to do the uh, service level agreement, and then finally how to generate reports. We are going to see, and we are going to see methodology also. Like Pega provide Pega BPM as a methodology. So there is like uh, how to uh, make actually how to generate your requirements specifications. So Pega provided the methodology that is actually like DCO. We are going to cover as Scrum and uh, that BPM part of it. So we are going to cover uh, how we can go for DCO. There are different phases of DCO, so that is we are going to cover into that part as well. Yeah. So that is like the main of the course. Mm -hmm. So if you have uh, one course. more, uh, yeah, just one point. Like uh, I don't have much experience in frameworks, right? They keep asking about uh, smart dispute framework. Uh, case okay. management framework. Can you explain about that, please? Like, how will it be covered here, or how do we understand? Uh, uh, frameworks are actually, like, if you can see, specific to domain. Actually, like, uh, uh, there are actually lot of frameworks are available into the market. Actually, like, depend on to the, your vertical, because actually, it's smart dispute actually are onto the banking domain or insurance. Okay. And actually, like, there are actually a lot of actually smart dispute, FSIS, for insurance, actually they have uh, PUC, UI. So actually, they are actually specific to domain knowledge. So uh, for this one, CPV course, you don't need any specific domain knowledge onto that. It's actually depend on which actually, uh, part you are working, that will be help you if you have previous experience onto the same domain. But the PEGA, actually, like, uh, when we are talking about CPV course, uh, there is no domain specific into that. 
there is nothing actually if there no question should be come for any domain specific so most of the application actually like uh, using uh, like either the it is like based on pega rules or either it is using some frameworks to start building onto the pega project so there are two different ways of if you are using pega rules so you need to know how you can integrate that into the pega but if you are using a framework you need to find it out what is the gap in that framework or how that is use that solution framework so that it like in the dco phase it change the behavior in pega rules actually like we need to gap uh, how we can integrate that into pega but in uh, if you are using a solution framework the dco session change how we can gap with like what are the features are there into the solution framework how can how can we fill that gap for the solution framework so if you say like you are working on a claim so for a specific claim if you say in your company there are some other specific processes are there so you want to just modify that process into that part so there is you do gap analysis a lot in case of solution framework but in case of uh, if you are using pega rules we are doing the mainly like requirements mapping onto that okay thank you Uh, and uh, do you provide any uh, more uh, questions for 7.2? Because uh, I'm personally trying to uh, do that exam, 7.2 exam. No, no, no. Um, so that's why I asked you. Yeah, uh, there are not much questions on to the 7.2. I have around uh, 100 questions. So I'll forward you that one. I think that is a clear question to the certification one. So I'll forward that questions part of the certification. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm. So, your, uh, what is your opinion? Should we take 7.1 exam or 7.2 exam? Uh, I feel like if you are already like in 7.1, so like 7.2 is more focused on to what's actually exact role of a business architect. So, I think there is more on analysis and application design. And if you want to stay with the PEGA, I feel like uh, with 7.1, I feel like they more focused on to the there are two parts of it, Vega fundamentals plus role of a business architect. So it's actually like you can say a mixture of both on in 7.1. Okay. So for you, I think it will be like 7.1 will be better. So you can go for, because you have already worked with the case designing and it's like uh, all other things, so the UI part already you have worked. So it will be Yeah, I have. But we never used uh, PEGA uh, in terms of uh, BA, right? Like they directly, the CSA would directly capture our requirements into their uh, implementation. So personally, I've never really used DCO or PEGA Express. I'm just familiar of those concepts because yeah, we were asked PEGA to take... Uh, yeah, PEGA Express was not there in 7.1. I think 7.2... Yeah, correct. So they yeah. are like uh, in PEGA 7.1, Actually, like the same designer studio you was used to uh, create the prototyping. We don't have any other portal or any actually environment where we can uh, can be used by business analysts. Yeah, so, so I have never done all that. So I never had the option to do the prototyping and all. We just got to okay. read, uh, do the the you know the TDN uh, courses, uh, but primarily it was a waterfall approach. So we had our own uh, you know documentation methodology that we followed. Okay. Okay. So. To follow it, okay. Most of the time, it's like most of the Pega projects works in Agile. Yeah, some of the companies. Exactly. Yeah, Scrum methodology they are using most of the project. Yeah, some of the technologies uh, like companies are still in waterfall approach. So, yeah, because actually like uh, in uh, this course also actually like they more focus on to the Agile methodology only. So the Pega BPM, actually, which is actually talked about the methodology, is a combination of waterfall and scrum. So they have combined and given as a hybrid methodology for Pega project. So Pega BPM is a hybrid of uh, waterfall and scrum. So that we are going to cover in our session. Thank you. Uh, Mukesh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, under this impression that for PEGA BA certification for 7 version, 
we have to study both 7.1 and 7.2 so is it like that or uh, we can we have an option to prepare for 7.1 um, give the certification for 7.1 only yeah 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 actually yeah actually see what actually like the course actually I'm planning that actually so that you can get the glance of both one actually after that I tell you can go for 7.1 or either you can go for 7.2 so actually I'm going to cover both version. No, no, I'm uh, talking about the certification. In the certification, mm -hmm. the question will be a mix of both the versions or if like I opted for 7.2. So will it uh, uh, cover all the questions from 7.1 as well as 7.2? Uh, because no, I'm no. told by someone that uh, if you are going for 7 point higher versions then uh, all the previous versions are also covered in the higher version. Like if I'm uh, going for 7.2 then 7.1 will be, uh, there will be questions from 7.1 as well. No Sonam, it's not like that. If you can see uh, the course, I feel like if you can I just show you that right uh, here. If you can see uh, the uh, seven point one domains and it like the domain wise, it's the question will come. So if there is actually like if you can see data modeling, automatic business policy, and reporting is not there in seven point two. Okay. Okay. So the, there will be no questions will be come from that. Okay. If I go for seven point two, then there will be no questions from seven point one. Actually, see, uh, if you see, actually, uh, when actually version comes, right? So that is an enhanced version of 7.1. Okay. Okay. So whatever the features will be there in 7.1, it's going to be there in 7.2 as well. So it's not that actually like, the 7.1 question will be not there. Okay. So if you see, actually, like, your Which application design, okay. uh, you can see like application design, case design, UI design, right? So they are yes. still there in 7.1 and 7.2. So they are common in between 7.1 and 7.2. So that is like around 70% of that are same. Okay. And there so, are topics like data modeling, uh, yeah. automating business policies and reporting. So these are not uh, in 7.2. That's right. So that questions will not be there. So from that, it's like they are main focused on that I told analysis. So they have actually made more focused on the how you do the analysis, how you can do the requirement gathering, how you create your functional requirement, how do you create your functional specification, how you do you integrate that with the your application. So there okay. is the main focus is into that. Okay. In 7.2? Yes. Okay. Okay. So as a business analyst we should go for 7.2 two only because that is more um, yeah actually they have main uh, given more approach to actually the role of business analyst onto that so they have actually like how you can integrate requirements how you create a uh, smart objective smart requirements so they have given more actually like how you do that and oh. they have integrated that with the pega applications so once you do the analysis how you can integrate with the design part of it okay so how you can integrate how you mm. capture that within the pega itself. So that is okay. going to cover more onto that 7.2. So if you are actually like new to the uh, pega, actually I'll suggest to go for 7.2 only. Okay. And one more thing, in this class we'll have a mix of both 7.1, like these topics which are not included in 7.2. So you are going to include those also in the classroom, right? Yes, that's right. So if you can see okay. the code content, I have covered both part of it, 7.1 and 7.2 itself. So either of yeah. one you want to go, you can go with that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Because 70% are actually like on the same. Actually between 7.1 and 7.2, 70% are the same code. So the 30% yes. was from actually like I'll cover from 7.1 and 30% from 7.2. So overall it will be like you will be get the both version. So You'll get the glance of the other part of it as well. Okay. Yeah. That's that's great. So anyway, we would yeah. So anyway, we would need data modeling, right? Like it'll help us even if we pass seven point two. Uh, we would be able to use that information that is there in seven point one. That's what you're trying to say, right? Like the reporting part and business policies, they have not changed in seven point two. Yes. 
Yes, it's not changed, but it's not part of the okay. certification. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, that will help for sure. It will help. So yeah, thanks for including both. So when you say it's 7.1 is expiring means you don't get to do the certification after December 31st on 7.1? Uh, yeah, Manu, uh, it's actually it says that like the certification is go to be retired. Actually, like, after that you are you are okay. not able to get certification on 7.1. Only you can have 7.2 afterwards. Okay. So anyway, after December, there is no question of 7.1 then. Yes. Till that, actually, you can appear for 7.1. After that, only 7.2 will be there. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any? Uh onset of the 7.3 version or uh, there will be only two versions 7.1 and 7.2 for this main 7 version uh, so is like, uh, yes no, actually the latest version actually 7.2.1 only the latest okay. version of Pega which is running actually by Pega is 7.2.1 so there is no 7.3 in the market okay. might be in future it will come so might be in like next 2-3 years Okay. 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 And the certifications are usually a year two valid. Uh, sorry, Manoj. Yeah, the certification validity is usually one to two years, or no, its warranty is actually like lifetime. It's actually like not going to expire. So once you are certified in that version, it's there. So there is no expiry of. Uh, certification. Okay. Oh, I had the same question actually. So basically if uh, there is an upgrade in the version like how it was earlier 6 uh, version 6 point something now it is at 7. When it goes to a higher version it is up to us to do another certification and get ourselves recertified. Is it? Yeah. That's right Priyanka. Okay. Actually like, if it is really you want it's like in that version also you want to certify you can go for that. Okay, um, Mukesh, can you tell me that uh, uh, how these uh, versions are created? Like, what was the difference in Pega 6 and Pega 7? And why they created 7.1 and 7.2? Why don't they create 8 version, Pega 8? So, how they uh, make these versions and how they differentiate the sub-versions? Mm -hmm. yeah, so, can we... Yeah. Right, so actually I'll explain you that. So, see, actually, like, uh, if you see, actually, like, uh, you use Word, right? Yes. Microsoft Word, right? So, yeah. if you have Microsoft 2007, 2010, 2013, 2016, there are yeah. different versions they have given that, right? Yeah, so yes. What, what you make, it, like, what are the different features you have got into that? Like, you have worked with the different versions of it, right? So how you yes, but the we didn't get uh, different sub-versions of Microsoft. Like yes. we have uh, 2007, then 8. It is not like 2007 point, uh, 2007.1, 2007.2. So that's what I want to know, that uh, why they make different versions. What are the, fun I means they change the functionality altogether. That's why they create a main version yes. or is it something else? So actually what actually happening, if you see, uh, Actually, apart from that, actually, you got hot fixes in between, right? Actually, it's not just you get updates in between as well. So that is like you say, if there is a, actually like the version wise, they have 7.1.1, 7.1.2, 7.1.3, 7.1.4, 7.1.9. .1 so they have okay. all the different versions are there. Before 7.2, this all versions they have released. So why they release multiple versions? Like. See, actually, someone has reported some features are not there in pay, that one. So they in, they included that into the newer version. Someone told that there is actually an existing bug is there. So they actually fix that and release one more version after that. So after that, actually, in that way, there are some hot fixes. There are some new features onto the each version comes onto that. So once they think that actually, like, is now there is enough features or enough actually uh, hot fixes is done. So they after that they go for a major change onto that from 7.1 to 7.2. Okay. And actually, they, actually like in that see there that like uh, from Pega 6 to Pega 7 there was a major revamp. Actually like the complete 
UI is changed. Okay, the integrations, UI, everything is changed from Vega 6 to 7. So directly from 6.3, they changed to 7. So okay. it might happen that actually like uh, 7, actually they are integrating like one cyclic tool, right? They are automating the things. So one cyclic they have an included automation, decision management, and actually in future they have integrated more things into that. So they might release 8 in near future. Yeah, that's so what it's I all about, It's all about the new features and the functionality in the world then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what material uh, would you be sharing with us uh, as part of this course? Yeah, actually I'm going to share you all like, like uh, the topics wise. I'm going to share you all like, like what you need. You can read it. And actually I'm going to share the actually that video you are going to get it. Okay. And all the documents and the questions actually I'll share you to that. And actually I'm trying to create an, uh, mock exams as well. So I'll give you one mock uh, test to, to do, so you can practice from that as well. So okay. you get all the documents which are listed into this uh, topic and then some questions which is like will be related to your uh, directly exams and some mock test you can practice from that. And uh, can we also do some real time uh, exercises in Pega? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks okay. uh, yeah, uh, to we are going to do actually real time only. Like I'm going to okay. do it like completely onto the application. Uh, we are going okay. to do actually like completely on Pega itself. So actually we have a Pega environment. So I'm going to do, do everything from uh, in Pega environment only. So that will give you the real time experience. How to do that? How it like we are designing the case? How to use the Pega Express? How we are designing the UI? So everything will be like onto the real time only. So and actually we are okay. going to cover that actually tool, right? We are going to create two prototypes of the application as well. So that actually will be on uh, the real time only. So we are going to use the same as actually we are doing in our day to day development. We are going to do the same in the training as well. Okay, great, thank you. And one more question. Like so we will be logging you... into the Pega systems? Sorry? Sorry, Manoj? No, Priyanka, go ahead. I can ask after you. Okay, sorry. No, no worries. Yeah. No, yeah that's, uh, uh, Mukesh, what I was asking was like, do we log into Pega, uh, real time Pega, um, and do it, or how do we like? Yes, when we do there, sessions. Uh, there are two ways. Actually, there is actually uh, one thing. Actually, you actually like there is a software, so you can download it and then you can install it in your laptop so that you can practice from that. Okay. Yeah. So then, actually, like, uh, I'll check with Ashok. Actually, we can arrange it. Like, there is actually okay. because this is a very big file. Actually, like, it's a five GB file. Oh, you so mean the software? That, like, how we can pass that software so that we'll take that out. Okay. Yeah. To I was just wondering how we, how do we get a hands-on experience yes. or work? Uh -huh. Yeah. Actually, uh, most of the training when we do it, like uh, class, actually, we'll provide the software to them so that they can practice online but I'll check with Ashok actually how we can pass the software to that like might be we can use the Google Drive so from the Google Drive you can download it from there. Okay so that's like pretty much same like how Pega looks the look yes. and feel of it. Okay. So actually I'll just give you it's like uh, Pega is just a one page application so if it looks like um, so this is like the Pega looks like the single screen. Okay. So everything is actually we do it from here, and which actually told about of express mode. So this is actually in 7.2. Uh, we have got that. So we can switch to Pega Express mode. So it will be look. It will convert into Pega Express mode. Okay. That's that's where the business architects will be working. So there, if you like, uh, business analyst and architect works in this. Okay. So they have actually included this feature that how the screen look like in different actually like in tablet, how it will look like in mobile. So you can directly see your applications from here itself. Okay. 
Let's so there you can create cases, you can create data, you can create users, and there are some settings you can do from directly from the Pega Experts. Right. So, um, Kish, do we need to do the prerequisite courses to pass the exam? Like uh, in PDN, we have uh, courses for uh, um, no, CPBS. I'm going to cover that. Okay. So okay. Uh, actually, either you can go for that courses or you can take the training. So, actually, like if okay. you have any, that's why I'm going to cover that courses here only for that part of training. Okay. okay. Thank you. Which courses you are talking about, Mugesh? I didn't get you. Hello? Uh, Mugesh, you ask... I mean, what was the course? Yeah, I was asking, like, uh, Priyanka was asking about the courses. You mean, like, what's that course is about? What? Uh, points in some course. What course? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're mentioning about the course, right, courses there. So you said you'll be covering the courses. Which courses there was that you're mentioning? Yeah, so Pega PDN, right, uh, um, Developers Network, there's, um, they have their own Pega Academy. And uh, not everyone can get access to it. It's like a paid course. Um, and uh, I know it's available, but it's not very easy to access. You need to either have it through your company then it's free otherwise you have to pay and get it so Mukesh explained that he is going through all that in his training so we don't need to do that separately it's covered in this course yeah well, just I'm going to show you that I feel like uh, when you go to Google and you feel like you will search for CPBA and you feel like you can get that the PDF for that I think that will be the transcript for that certification so there is like if you can see there are two versions 7.1 and 7.2. Okay. So this is that was uh, given by Pega. So what is the difference of unit server onto that? Okay. So that's the topic wise with the blueprint of that. So here like the, there is something prerequisites are mentioned. So there is like a, there's a domain we are going to cover. Okay. And if you can see here the prerequisites. So they actually like tell about these two prerequisites business architect essential so business arch essential for technical architect so that two courses if you see that as, a, as part of the course so that is what I am going to cover in the training okay got it mm -hmm. so same if like in CPBA you can see the same way basically there is two different courses one is the fundamental and if you in the business architect essential. So there are two courses now. They have split it into two courses onto that. And then domain wise, same as like which I told, application analysis and design will be covered from that. Okay. So actually if you can see the questions wise, all are multiple choice, multiple responses and matching. So there is no true false question previously. There are true false questions was there, so they have removed true false questions now. So only the multiple choice with single answer or multiple answers. So Mukesh, I have a pre-planned. Uh, I mean, I have relocated to India, so I have pre-planned trip for around uh, eight days in. Um, um, you know, this month, uh, I'm not sure I'll have internet connection in those eight days. So if I miss a class, how do I, uh, you know, if I take this uh, course, how can I compensate it? Is there some option you have? Mm. So actually, uh, uh, that I need to actually uh, take with that. We are going to record the complete session, so you will get the recording and also you can check out uh, the yeah. other part of it. I will check with Ashok onto that. Uh, Pri that recording, I think Ashok can share that out. Yeah. Priyanka, uh, suppose if we start some other batch, I will include in that uh, in the timings. 
Yeah, uh, for those uh, lessons alone, right? Like, uh, I don't want to miss, if you're starting yeah. a course, I don't want to miss it. That's right. yeah. There are two options. Right? One is uh, whatever you missed, for that when sh that sessions I will allow you, or else if you go through the recordings, if you have any doubts, I will uh, arrange one one-on-one uh, one -on -one session with uh, Mukesh for you. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that would be great, yeah. Thank you. Okay, fine, thank you. Some noise is coming from you, right? Yeah, hi, uh, Manoj and if you have any questions, you can ask me now. And the sessions also, we are planning to start from tomorrow onwards. 